if you're a no slide skeptic, if you want an RV with no slides for the peace of mind and simplicity, stay tuned. I got a very popular couples model here I think you're going to like. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd of Vicious RV here with the 20 RDSE Grey Wolf. She is back, back, back again for another year. And overall, looks pretty darn similar to how she looked last year, but maybe you didn't see it last year. Maybe you're curious. There are a couple little updates and upgrades that have gone through it right here. If you're not familiar with it, this is a simple, easy, no slide uh, couples model. But what's really cool about it is, although it's not like there's not like a hard wall and a door enclosing the front bedroom, it still very much feels private enough for most people. And if you are going to have a guest, as opposed to like the Jayco version of this that has like a small dinette and a small sofa, this just has one big mega dinette basically across the entire rear wall of this sucker that you could you could pop the table out you could use it like a lounge or you could put the table in use it like a dinette or you could fold it down and now you have a uh, a guest sleeper that could even be adult size so uh what if you're like a single parent and sometimes you run around and most of the time it's just you but sometimes you want to bring your kid with you well you know, there's just not a lot of campers that can work for that. Or if you're doing buddy hunting, camping, or something like that. Or if it's just two of you, and sometimes you have a grandkid, or you got a big dog, or something like that. This is one little RV with no slides that is lightweight, that is easy to move around and do all that. Now, what's interesting is they went with a heavier GVW on this versus most other brands. So what that means is that technically, you're going to need a little bit heavier truck to be able to legally handle it. But the thing is, this RV has over like 3,000 pounds, give or take, of cargo carrying capacity, which is vastly superior to what I see out of most little trailers like this. Short, small, light, tandem axle, easy towing. There's a lot of good features all wrapped up into this thing, but it's also got a couple hitches in its giddy up. I want to show you the good with maybe the not so good. I don't know how you're going to feel about them, but I'm going to point them out. And if you appreciate that fair approach, hit that subscribe button and let's roll. So starting from the entry door, seems like a logical place to begin our little adventure here. I want to point out that we're very pet friendly. You know, there's no carpet, no floor vents. So keeping this thing clean is pretty darn easy. And because the bathroom, bulky as it may be, is in the middle of the RV, it does kind of create a pseudo privacy for the front bedroom where I'm standing right now. Plus, there's also a privacy curtain. You can actually just see that peeking in off the left side of the screen right there. So you, you, you kind of can enclose this a little bit. But overall, technically, it is a one-room open... Well, I guess you got a bathroom, but you get the idea. It's a, it's a one-cabin open concept plus a bathroom kind of thing. But it just doesn't necessarily feel that way. And it's no slides, which there's certainly areas... Like, when you're here where I'm standing currently, not where we're looking, but where I'm standing, between the kitchen and the bathroom, yeah, it's a little tight. If my wife wanted to get past me, I'd have to belly right up to the bar so she could do the sideways travel trailer two-step and butt scoot boogie right behind me. But... You know, it's a small, no slide camper. That's just kind of the, the nature of the beast. What's interesting, though, is it's no slides without really feeling extra small. And I think a big portion of that is due to the fact that you have, well, compared to a couple years ago, that had virtually black cabinets. They, were, they weren't technically, but man, they were close. You've also got these gigantic, like, panoramic and breeze-through windows here. But here's an interesting thing. If you want the RV to look and feel even bigger still... Pull that table out of there. Pull it out of there and just leave this thing like an open lounge. Now, I'm not going to sit here and insult you and say on a rainy day that it is as comfortable as most RV sofas. But you know what? If I'm going to be stuck inside this thing for an extended period, having that table out of the way and, uh, you know, obviously taking my shoes off so my feet aren't on the furniture and kind of like parking myself over in the corner of that and stretching my legs out uh, might be actually kind of nice. Not to mention, if you're kind of laying down, lounging over on the right side bench, you'd be facing right where the TV hookups would be located. Although, um, I don't know that this is an RV that a lot of people are buying because like, oh boy, I'm going to enjoy that awesome entertainment center. But it's, it's actually, it's not terrible for what it is. This is also a nice thing uh, I'm glad to see here. They have centralized the air conditioning. Now, to be fair, most builders of a layout like this have centralized the air but there are still a couple that are going to be a dollar cheaper out there that don't and as a result they don't always get the most even cooling effect depending on you know where the sun is beating on your rv uh on a given day 
Now this is where the TV hookups are located over here. So this is what I was saying. Let me actually slide my way over here into this kind of rear corner. I'm gonna keep my shoes off the furniture, obviously. But if you're gonna be stuck inside here for a while, you know, you could have your back against the cushion, you could have your feet kicked up, and you could have an absolutely awesome view um, <clears throat> around your campsite. Or obviously you could pull the shades. That blue sky and the greenery back here, it just is looking good. You can see how the, I don't know when this video is going to come out, but at the time this is uh, recording, obviously, it is color change season here. And we are getting ready to experience an influx of touristy type people we know as leafers. And they come to see all the pretty tree colors. And you know what? I'm glad to have them. Michigan is a very tourist-based state, so I'm not going to complain about the people that help pay for, you know, paving our roads and, and funding my daughter's education. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, hold on. Um, that nice open pocket right there, to me, that's just begging for a big wastebasket. Although you'll see under the sink, there's actually a nice spot for a little one under there as well. Um, the, the dinette. So let's let's kind of talk about that, even though we're not looking at it right now as I stand back up. It is a pedestal-style post dinette, as you may have noticed earlier. However, they are not recessed uh, pedestal mounts. So if you take your handy-dandy screw gun and just zzz, zzz, NASCAR pit crew those things out of the floor, the, the flooring-type material they're using, you might, if you go looking for it, see where those things used to be. But what I would do is I would remove the pedestal posts and I would swap the legs. I would keep the same table top, but I would swap the legs for a set of free floating folding legs. And that would give me the ability to shift that table around, scoot it around or turn it if I wanted to, which I think could actually be cool. A lot of different little things you could do with a floor plan like this. I uh, I don't know, personally for me, I think it, it works pretty nicely. Now, take it a look. We've kind of given you a look through most of the living and the kitchen area here. Let me start opening stuff up. Uh, let's begin right up here. Crack that whole cabinet open right there. Um, the dinette, the whole dinette is storage. They don't give us any sort of alternative access to it. We don't have drawers. We don't have doors. We don't have any sort of secondary way of accessing any of that storage, which I think would actually be really, really handy. Um but it is what it is. That's that's the fact of the matter. Um, it, it probably wouldn't be the hardest thing in the world to like uh, convert the ends of those dinettes from just panels into a door. Now, the kitchen has gone through what I think is a potentially significant update. Um, for the most part, this RV is the same as what you've seen. But the kitchen no longer has a propane oven. Instead, what they have is an air fryer uh, microwave oven down here in the location of the traditional oven. I personally like uh, a microwave mounted down low because I like the idea that if I've got a bowl of hot soup, I don't have to worry about accidentally dribbling it down from something mounted up really high. Now, to be fair, at my home, I have a microwave mounted up really high. So obviously I make do with it, but it's just a personal preference. Some people really dislike having a microwave cooking station down here below the countertop level. I don't want to bend over to grab stuff all the time. Totally fair. You might want to look at something like the J-Flight version of this, who has not gone this route. Different builders have little different executions here and there, you know. I like the double big drawers. Um, occasionally, you'll still see some goofball manufacturer just, like, totally fail to put any drawers in here. But by getting the microwave down low, they have expanded your overhead cabinet space and gained more storage up here. Now, I really pride myself on going the extra mile to showcase things that maybe are awesome and maybe are not. And I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to let you comment uh, and, and tell me, do you like this wire mesh concept that you can see through it? You can't really see clearly through it, but you can see through it. Now, if I just stood back here, it's really hard to tell. And I wanted to go out of my way to kind of let you know exactly what it is and what it's not so that you had the best and most educated concept possible before you go potentially spending lots and lots of money. So uh, if nothing else, like if that means, if you're like, ooh, I don't like that in this camper, do me a favor and just at least hit the like button on the video to tell me, hey, you know, or like leave me a comment, good job, nerd, something like that, I don't know. Uh, down below the uh, 10 cubic foot refrigerator, you've got a battery voltage monitor uh, a battery disconnect and your converter, which actually can convert, uh, can charge either traditional lead acid or um, lithium batteries. It'll actually figure out the type of battery you have uh, hooked up to the camper and charge accordingly. Now, sometimes people will ask, uh, oh, this only has 100 watts of solar. Can that keep up with the fridge when you're going down the road? 
that's that's actually not how any of it works. You need zero watts of solar to run a 12 volt fridge going down the road. You don't uh, technically legally you need a battery on the camper to be legal while you're towing, but you don't actually even need a battery to run that fridge going down the road. The power coming in off the seven way charge line uh, from your vehicle, assuming you have a uh, a charge line run through the seven way plug, most tow packagey kind of things will. But double check that with your vehicle manufacturer by giving their service department your VIN number. Um, anyway, what I'm saying is the vehicle alone can run the refrigerator in transit. So uh, there, there's no worries about that. That 12-volt compressor fridge is actually very, very travel-friendly, travel-functional. Um, now, around the corner over here, on uh, this side, you've got some household outlets and this black bar thing. That is a vertical mount for a portable Bluetooth speaker, which is not included with this RV. And you might be going, why, why, would, they, why would they do that? Well, because the, uh, the, 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 the people who make the Bluetooth speaker, give them that charger, that charging mount for free. So they throw it in because it's an extra widget that they can talk about in their uh, brochures. That's that's the why behind it. Not that it's really significantly useful or beneficial. That's just, that's the case of the matter. Now over here, it's a little more interesting. There's a single household outlet, USB plug and a type C USB plug. And that is also a single point inverter. So if you need to run something like a standing fan or something like that off battery power for an overnight uh, stopover, you could do that here, which I think is kind of cool. Now, uh, again, going out of my way to, to volunteer information that might be problematic for some folks, that's a Camp Queen. If you look at it, yeah, you could physically put a True Queen in its place, but then you're basically going to be climbing into bed. So I guess you have to ask yourself, is sleeping for six or eight hours more important than walking around the bed real quick? And there's no right or wrong answer to that. If, if your answer is no, I need to be able to walk around the bed, then that is your answer, and I respect it, and that's that's perfectly fine. I will tell you, if what you are looking for is just the best night's sleep, that mattress... <laughs> probably not going to be the source of said night's sleep. Now, you may have noticed there is a privacy curtain here, which is actually kind of cool, so that you can uh, totally enclose stuff off. And they've changed the way everything works under their bed this year. So the bed technically still lifts. You have to kind of use the mattress to wedge the bed decking in place. But their goal was to create the ability to access cargo that has shifted in the front compartment or potentially create like a, uh, a a traveling cargo area inside the RV without like a cargo garage or toy hauler or anything like that. And they've done that across most of the Cherokee RV families, like Gray Wolf, Wolf Den, Cherokee. You're going to see a lot of this this year. Is it the right call? Is it the wrong call? Leave me comments, let me know, and because I, I don't know. Like I could kind of almost see it going a little bit of both ways. I, I can see some benefits, but... I do prefer, I think, personally, just a gas strut lifted bed, but that's me. Toilet space here in the bathroom, it is tight like a tiger. Especially if you're righty, it's going to be tidy because they did not cut that uh, bathroom counter back right there. Um, I mean, could I? Yeah, at my size and stature, could I do my business? Yes. It does feel like it, I don't know, it, it's... It is very tight. That's I, I guess I. that's the only... I, I'm just going to keep saying it's tight, it's tight, it's tight. I'm an idiot. This wall, I really feel, needs something to hang towels. Or maybe you get one of those uh, things from, you know, the Target or whatever that hangs over the door, and you can hang towels off of that. Um, now, if you notice, though, there's also a full big bathroom uh, medicine cabinet, not just a mirror that actually does have some nice storage to it. That is one thing I, I really respect Cherokee for. They don't get cheap, stupid, and chintzy on that. They, uh, you know, that that's a big feature that they keep, even here at one of their most simple series trailers. And obviously, you've got that big vent fan up top. I like to call that the Fajita Friday Fume Fighter. Very, very handy in the bathroom space, but also the shower. With this being six and a half foot tall, when you have to step up into the shower pan a little bit, I'm a little over six foot myself plus shoes, and I wear some very thick sole, ultra comfort kind of shoes. So I'm probably six two uh, standing in there. My head's all the way up in that skylight. Some folks that really might just grind your gears. I get it. I totally, totally get it. It is what it is. Again, I'm not going to go out of my way to fail to showcase something just because it might be a problem. There's awesome aspects on this camper, and there's some things 
that might disqualify it from working for, for you or for somebody else, you know. Doesn't mean it's a bad camper. Just might mean it's not the right one for you. And with no slide, buddy, we are in road mode ready to go. Perfect for what I call stealth mode camping, where you can pull into a driveway anywhere, walk inside and use a whole RV. Um, you know, never having to worry about it. No slide sometimes very handy that way. And we kind of touched on this when the video first began, but, uh, you know, looking at the towing weights, measures, tank capacities, all that, what kind of vehicle are you going to need to move this one around? I think that this is a very solid pairing for like tow package half tons. You should mo most, most tow package half tons are going to yank this thing right around, frankly, pretty darn readily. But the, you know, there, you always want to dive into the individual capacities of certain vehicles. Now, where it gets interesting is if we start talking about the Ford Ranger with tow package or something like that, technically, this is within the weights and measures. I haven't checked the hitch weight, but uh, in terms of towing weight and GVW, it is potentially within the weights and measures of a tow package Ranger. I don't know that I'm comfortable with that pairing, though. I don't know that I would recommend anything less than a larger class SUV equivalent half ton sized vehicle, just because I feel like there's physically enough of this that it's bigger than the truck. It's going to push it around pretty good, you know? Now, I get that a lot of RVs are bigger than the truck, but like, you know what I mean? It doesn't, ugh, I don't know. It doesn't look right. doesn't feel right in my head when I think about it. Um, we do have a extra thick aluminum nose sweep on the front here, and it's subtle, but they actually have changed the profiles on the front of their Grey Wolves just a little bit, actually the entire family, and that's going to provide a little bit better, you know, um, like front end design in terms of like kitchen storage and whatnot up there. Power tongue jack, double propane tanks, pretty standard fare right there. Down below we have the um, LCI quick drop stabilizers, uh, not a common scissor jack. Now if you're not familiar with these, uh, basically they've got uh, what, if you've been around the industry for a while, a JT strong arm stabilizer is basically integrated into it, but it has an extra lock bar in it basically just to take a lot of that wiggle and jiggle out of the RV when you are sitting at your destination. Solar charge controller up front, they have upgraded that to be 30 amp now. So if you want to daisy chain a couple extra solar panels together, by default up top on the roof, this has a, uh, a, a battery tending 100 watt solar package. Now somebody like me, who's not a boondock off grid warrior, who just needs a little bit of solar to keep their battery tended and the rest of the time I park camp, that's fine. But if you want to expand on that, you could throw Roughly about 400 watts of solar total up there, not 400 additional. Maybe maybe it's capable, I don't know. But I've been told pretty safely about 400 watts and it'll work for you. Um, the power awning, uh, it, it does have lighting. Uh, I just don't have any of that turned on. Plus, during the day, you're not really going to see. Man, I tell you what, with that green backdrop right here against the property line, it looks pretty good. And apologies for like the extra wonky camera angles. I don't know if you noticed, but I was right next to like a muck and mire pond right there. I'm not a the world's biggest fan of outside speakers and you know i mean something when my voice for some reason uh it, it jumps two octaves like that but i respect that they put them down here at chesticle level so that you're not blowing away the neighbors with your freedom rock when you know you, you do want to listen to some music outside you've got some speakers that can do that without blowing everything away now with my left hand i'm keeping the flora and fauna of the uh the, the world at bay with my right hand i'm running the camera so apologies i've only got one hand i feel like you, you remember those old cartoons where like donald duck was in a, a canoe and it starts popping holes so he starts sticking all of his fingers in it until he starts filling up with water kind of how i feel right now anyway we are prepped and ready for a telescopic removable ladder it is not included, but it does have a walkable roof and it is ready for it. Um, I would prefer a ladder just be there, but for a couple years, these had absolutely no allowance for a ladder whatsoever. So I'll take the telescopic prep over no ladder prep whatsoever. Um, that is an LCI InSight Bluetooth camera. So when you're backing up, you can keep things in sight. Get it? That's not even my joke. That's literally why they named it the name that they named it, which frankly, I've, I've heard worse corporate marketing. <laughs> um, again, we are easy, we are no slide. We've got that cargo rack on the back here. That has about a 200 pound capacity, but keep in mind that's before the spare tire is on it. So just uh, make sure you're, you're budgeting your weight and your cargo uh, accordingly. 
over here they've they've gone with the um the choice to black out the wheels which i i don't know i don't dislike the look of that i always wonder like i think shiny aluminum wheels would look cool but they would probably cost more and this is a very cost sensitive series of campers so kind of keep that in mind but again it is a very smart class of campers where you know boring things to talk about it has a hot cold outside utility shower it has black tank flush that is such boring stuff to talk about or listen to, and I'm running into the RV behind me. But those are useful things that you're going to use, see, feel, and touch every single camping trip. I'm glad they're there. Also up front here, uh, they do have a tankless on-demand water heater. So if you are going to take a couple back-to-back -back showers or someone's also using some hot water for cooking, nobody has to end up taking the, uh, the goosebump shower, you know what I mean? Somebody the other day I heard refer to what I've always called goosebumps as goose goose pimples is is that a regional thing like like pop or soda coke and pepsi um like i've i've never heard it before but it seems like something that maybe some people say am i wrong is that a thing but as we've gone through this video a couple times i've mentioned things like jaco has a version of this or somebody else there's other people that build a version like this like springdale's is also pretty good um but maybe you haven't seen those. So what I'm going to do to try to help you is any of them that I have recorded, I'm going to leave a link to them in the video description, uh, along with a link to check for pricing and availability on this one right here. So whether you're curious or whether you're serious, that's all just going to be basically one click away. And let me know which one you'd go with and why and what you think about the updates and upgrades here. I'm very specifically curious what you think about the changes to the kitchen that they made on this one. Let me know if you'd be so kind. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.